Hello, uh, today is uh, June 15th, 2023, and we'll talk about William Le Baron Jennings. Well, the name in the middle is French, but uh, he was a North American architect. Uh, let's read a little bit about him. Well, I guess I was wrong. Not only that he was not born on June 15th, he actually died on June 14th. Sorry about this. It means my... Uh, uh, list with the uh, celebrations has uh, uh, problems. William Le Baron Jenny was an American architect and engineer uh, who is known for building the first skyscraper in 1884 and became known as the father of the American skyscraper. <clears throat> so at least we learned that um, the first skyscraper in the United States, but I imagine that was the first ice scrape, ice, uh, skyscraper period, was born in 1884. And its author was William Le Baron Jenny. In 1998, Jenny was ranked number 89 in the book 1000 Years, 1000 People, ranking the men and women who shaped the millennium. Now, the North Americans love this kind of, uh, you know, um, hierarchies. Um, it was the end of the millennium. That's why, you know, uh, the book 1000 years, 1000 people. And he was, uh, you know, on the position 89. Not bad at all. Bravo to William Le Baron Jenny, who built the first American skyscraper or the first sky, skyscraper in 1884. This was the man. Uh, so he was born in 1832. And uh, this is the skyscraper, so to speak. Of course, he didn't imagine, you know, how skyscrapers were to become. Uh, William Le Baron Jenny. A distinguished uh, gentleman. We do have to acknowledge it. Now, Colonel James Bowen House in Hyde Park, Chicago, built in 1869. So he didn't build just uh, the first skyscraper. He built other buildings as well, but no pictures. Uh, Metropolitan Block in Wisconsin, built in 1874, no pictures. First Congregational Church, uh, Manistee, Michigan, 1892-1898. Now, you wouldn't expect the father of the, the American skyscraper to build uh, this kind of church. But uh, in actuality, it's, it's kind of a small uh, skyscraper here as well, the clock tower. <laughs> and uh, it's not a bad building. It's just that it's a little bit unexpected, you know, from the father of the skyscraper to also build churches and this kind of church. But it's, it's not a bad building. I, I almost feel like saying it's better, actually, than the first skyscraper. And I also like, uh, you know, some Gothicist uh, suggestions in the structural system that sustains the roof. It's not bad. So William Le Baron Jenny, um, maybe he deserved that uh, 89 uh, placement on the on the on the on the hierarchy of 1000 people who shaped the world of the second millennium William Le Baron Jenny who in 1884 let us not forget built the first skyscraper <clears throat> Home Insurance Building, Chicago, <clears throat> built in 1884, also 1884. But maybe this is the skyscraper. Uh, home Insurance Building, because I don't think he built another one in 1884. <clears throat> there is a taller building behind, but I don't know if he built that one. And maybe that one was built after this one. It's not bad, you know, it's a historicist uh, taller building. Um, you know, the fascination with history existed uh, in the 19th century, more than in the 20th century. And I would say it's, it's, it's not bad, you know. it's Of course, today we would not do something like this, you know, with the uh, capitals and, uh, you know, um, formal agitations that uh, 
belong to ornaments. Now, this is how it looked like in, a, in an old uh, postcard. Is it the same building? Maybe, <laughs> but it looks a little bit different. Um, you see the other building, the tall building was not yet built or so it seems. Yeah, it was not yet built. So obviously that was built after this one. So the, you know, the metallic structure was not shown. It appears as if it is masonry, but it's not masonry, of course, for such a height. Horticultural building for the World's Colum Columbian Exposition in Chicago, built in 1893. So uh, from 1884 to 1893, you know, 16 years passed. And here we are in the field of Bozar. Here we are in the field of, uh, you know, uh, fully blown uh, nostalgia. But is it a bad building? I don't think it is. If this building uh, was still alive, uh, would be uh, still very appreciated. So 1894, the World's Exhibition, the Columbian Exhibition in Chicago, 18, 1893. William Le Baron Jenny. Not the smallest building on earth, but look around it. You know, it's, it's, it's where is Chicago actually? Well, Chicago suffered because of a big fire. Lake Forest Cemetery, Lake Forest, Illinois. In the 19th century, architects also worked on cemeteries. They, they didn't neglect uh, Domus Eterna. Today, very few architects uh, spend time, uh, you know, uh, working for such matters. In my opinion, the devaluation of, of, of death has consequences, serious consequences on life itself. Because uh, in the two cups of the, the existential uh, uh, clepsydra uh, uh, or hourglass, uh, are, one is called life, the other one is called death. And if you neglect death, you also neglect life. Lad Laddington Building in Chicago, 1891, National Historic Landmark. This one looks good. It's not so tall, but, uh, well, it was refurbished. But uh, it's, 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 it's a building which, uh, if it was built today, it would certainly make it to the pages of uh, Arch, Arch Daily. Maybe not so certainly. Uh, a residence, 1869. <laughs> Again, would you imagine that this architect built the first skyscraper? No, but in the you know almost mid 19th century, the Victorian uh, spirit was very much alive, even across the ocean. On the other hand. Would it be uh, unpleasant to live in such a house? I don't think so. I think it would be very pleasant, maybe more pleasant than to live in a concrete, uh, refined, uh, uh, polished uh, box by Tadawando. I admire Tadawando, but uh, surprisingly, Tadawando himself doesn't live in a concrete box or in a concrete house, but in a wooden house. Can you believe it? So the house where Tadao Ando lives is a wooden house made of wood. You know, it was the house of his parents and he lives in it. It's not a concrete house at all. But okay, maybe this house is too sweet for our uh, rather more cynical taste. But in this sunlight and with all that uh, vegetation around and the happy trees, uh, maybe we wouldn't feel too unhappy in such a house either. Manhattan Building, Chicago. <laughs> Strange, I didn't know there was a Manhattan, Manhattan Building in Chicago because the, between uh, New York and Chicago, uh, there is competition, a fierce competition. 
and Manhattan, of course, belongs to New York. Manhattan building in Chicago, built in 1891, also a national historic landmark. This is, in my, in my opinion, his best building. I like these uh, bow windows. I don't know why it was called Manhattan uh, building. Maybe, who knows, a company that was called Manhattan, or I, I don't know. But it's, a, it, it's an excellent building by William Le Baron Jenny. And it's still in good shape, 18, uh, 1891. So 130 years ago, more than 130 years ago. And it's tall. And it has this kind of details. And look at what's happening at the bottom of the, of the, of the bow windows. Why not? Try it yourself in one of your projects. Bring, bring uh, you know, the mask into the architecture. You could ask, why did he do this? Let's investigate. It could be maybe the subject of a possible PhD paper. Why did William Le Baron Jenny the father of the American skyscraper or the father of skyscraper of the skyscraper, the first built in 1884, do, some, do something like this. Why did he need this? New York Life Insurance Building in Chicago, another building, uh, you know, uh, of the competitor, New York, 1894. You see carriages with, uh, with horses, no cars. So maybe the, the picture was from, uh, from then, uh, the turn of the century. New York insurers from that time, uh, of course, the insurance buildings uh, uh, ran the show because they had the money. Why? Because people are afraid, afraid of dying, and so they invest in insurance. Are you insured? You are not insured? <laughs> I hear this all the time, even in Romania. Not in English, of course. As if you are insured, you escape death. Of course you don't escape it. But you make the insurance uh, buildings, uh, you know, taller and taller, more and more impressive, with or without a steel structure. Like here, the modernism of the structure is then hidden by masonry walls, because the novelty would have been too great to bear, you know, to show, you know, the the, the slender steel structure. It, it it would have been shocking for the people. So it was hidden with masonry uh, coverings or clothing. Second lighter building in Chicago, 1889. Now this one is refurbished. I am sorry, this building, without any doubt, if it was built today, would have been just fine, would have been advertised and publicized as a great building built in the in the year 2023 or 2022 or 2021, but not before. It was built at the end of the, of the um, 19th century. But yes, refurbished. William Le Baron Jenny. The strange thing is I live for five years in Chicago, well, Evanston, Chicago, and, uh, you know, I, I never visited these buildings. I saw others, you know, by Frank Lloyd Wright and Louis Sullivan and Miss Van der Rohe, but not these. Now I regret. D.K.E. Shunt, Ann Arbor, Michigan, 1878. I don't know what this is actually. Is it a house or a... I don't know. Interesting that number there, six, one, and one, and then a little 12 or half, probably half. What is it, a church or a... maybe it is a church. 
Why, why was it not called the church? Uh, this telephone exasperates me. You know, nobody calls the whole day. And when I do the presentation, it calls. I even forget I have it. Part of or all of Garfield Park, 100 North Central Park Avenue, Chicago. Um, <laughs> anyway, look at this. I don't know if he did this building or not. He certainly didn't do the sky and didn't do the water in the lake and the beautiful trees. But the building is not bad. Let's read again. Part or all of Humboldt Park, roughly bounded by North Sacramento and Augusta Boulevards and the North Kedzi, North and oh God. It's too long. Part or all, yeah. I guess he, <clears throat> it's possible he did this building. It's not bad. The Victorian influence is there, the Gothicist influence is there, but it's still a building that uh, could be accepted today as well. And uh, the green is as beautiful as ever. I guess he did the whole park somehow, and I don't know exactly what parts he built. And abruptly, after my mobile phone rang, the presentation, imperfect as it is, ended. So I thank you for being here. That was it today.